Right, today we're gonna to create a, a kind of slimy, dripping text reveal, okay? A little bit like this. So let me show you how you create that text dripping effect inside of Cinema 4D. Okay, let's have a look at how we make this um, text drip effect. Okay, so what we do is we start off with a um, MoGraph text and we're just gonna put one character in there. So we do a capital D and then this changed the font to my favorite, if I can find it. Um, this one, Astounder Squared. Just use a bold font is what I would say for this effect. And then if we put a 60 centimeters in the depth, then on the caps, let's just put a couple on there just to round that off a little bit. Right, so we do the D. Um, let's just call that D just so we don't um, um, lose where we are. Then this one will be the R. So let's change that to capital R. Oh, capital R. There we go. Move that over, and then we'll copy another one for the I. Put I in there. Move it across, and then finally for the P, and then just rename that P. Right. So let's just move these in the right place. So we've got that, and what we want to do is just kind of make it look a bit more funky. So we're going to twist it like that. Just give it a bit of random effect. Let's make that one bigger and sort of roll in. Let's go the other way. Let's make it a bit different and push it into the letter like that. And then the eye. This, this bit's just random. This is entirely up to you here, What how you do this. And do that with a P. But it's just to make a sort of an interesting shape out of out of the, the out of the letters like that okay so they all look a bit random and pushed together and maybe they're a little bit too close something like that okay what we want to do now is get something that will make the drip that will drip off the bottom like the paint dripping effect so what we use is a capsule okay and we just shrink that down and then we pop it Let's just move the capsule and not the text. And we just pop it like that, just so it looks like it's gonna be dripping off the bottom of the letter. And then if we do a control copy and have another one, let's put that one there, make it probably a bit bigger. Vary it a little bit, like that. Let's have a look at what's happening from the side view. It's not too bad. And let's have, let's have another one and put that on there so we get that sort of look and then finally let's put one inside the one of the one of the oh uh, sorry one of the gaps in the letters here so it looks like it's dripping through there like that okay so that's kind of the first thing to do is just to put these kind of random capsules in there right that doesn't look too much like dripping paint yet right let me just turn off the work plane so you can see all this right how do we make that look like um like it's dripping um dripping paint all over it right what we do is we use a volume builder so if we click on this icon here and then we just simply um select all of these the capsules and all the text and then we make it a child of the volume builder drop it underneath right now that's obviously very high highly pixelated um they're actually voxels they're called voxels and i think that's like a 3d version of a pixel and at the moment they're 10 centimeters which is far too big and they're very pixelated so we just want to put in there a two okay and that brings that down into that that look right while we're on here we need to up this interior voxel range Let's go for about 12. This will come in useful later. So we'll put that in there now. Right, what we need to do now is use a field or several fields. 
to create this dripping effect, you know, so it's animated. So what we do is we go to here and we add a group field and then we put the group field under the volume builder and then we add uh, a linear field and a, a random field. In the random field, the blending mode here, we want to change to overlay and it's on noise already, which is okay. Uh, we can add a little bit of animation speed onto this noise. Let me just put a, like 2% in there. Right, so what's gonna happen, at the moment you can see on the screen there's a, there's a square that's being affected, this cube. So we wanna change that. So if we go to Volume Builder and we click on the, the, the group field here, right, first of all, we wanna change that to subtract. And then down here that where it says creation space, that's using that box. And we want it to use the objects. Okay, so we click on objects below. And then if you look over here, look, it's kind of done some changes. Now we need to change the orientation of the linear field because we want this to, to wipe from top to bottom. So we're gonna use the Y and we're gonna use the negative Y like that. So as you can see, look, we've already starting to get this this kind of drip effect happening, but it looks a bit blocky still. So what we can do with that is if we go to the volume builder, we can click on this SDF smooth here, look, and look what happens straight away, it smooths it all out. Right, now, what I think we need to do is adjust a few things because we, let's just have a look at how that's looking. That might actually not be too bad. We're actually losing some of the detail here where we put that, um, that cylinder in there, sorry, that capsule in there. So let me just see if we, let's have a look at, if we bring that voxel size down to 1.5, and then if we look at the, the group, um, sorry, not group, we look at, where am I trying to look at? I'm trying to look at the volume builder and then the group. Yeah, just here surface threshold um we might be able to add i mean it might let's just, just let's just try this effect for now let's just see what we and we may have to just make some amends a bit later so if we click on linear field if we lift that up you can see it's giving that effect of it's if you go right to the very top that it's not on and then we can keyframe this so what we do is to start with the timeline at zero, put the linear field up like that, and then keyframe it. Let's give ourselves 200 frames. And let's go to about frame 100, and let's bring this down. So it's completely below, like that. And then keyframe it there. So obviously what that will do is it will wipe on this effect okay so it'll reveal all of this happening but there's a one little drawback at the moment if i just let that play and i stop it say there if you render that there's nothing there because basically a volume builder acts a little bit like a spline where it needs um like a spline wrap and some, ge and some geometry put it onto the, a spline for you to see it it's the same with the volume builder you need the other part. Now, if you ever look on here and hold your finger down, you've got the volume measure, and this is what's going to add the geometry. So if we put in a volume measure, and then we click on the volume builder, and then we drop it underneath it and make it a child. Now, straight away now, look, if you now press render, there will actually be some geometry on the screen now it's in the measure. Right, so what can we do now to improve this slightly? Right, um, on the measure, let's add a displacer and put that underneath the measure and go to object um so the tens will be okay shading right let's add a noise shader to that and let's take that noise shade let's change it to something like a, a sparse convolution and then bring up the global scale to about 400 and then let's add a bit of animation speed here like two Right, what else? Let's now put a smoother in there, just to smooth things out a little. So if we go to smoothing, we drop that under the measure. 
So if you see the difference there, you've got that kind of roughness and then it smooths it out. So let's see what we've got. I think what we need to do is let's just add um, a material. Let's put in a nice funky kind of slimy color. Uh, let's copy that. Let's add a luminance channel. And then under luminance, I want to add a subsurface scattering. And this will act a little bit like, like candle wax or like foam or something where you have light coming through it. So it's got a, this, so like the light is scattering through the surface of this material. So if we click on that and then just right click and paste that um, shader color into there. Let's have a look at the path length. Let's just play around with that. Let's just put this oh, let's up the strength to about 150. And let's put this on the mesher. Okay, let's put a background in. Let's just put a background in of, um, let's just have a nice black background, shall we? So it really stands out against it. And let's just let that run to there. And then let's just render that and see what we've got. Okay, not looking too bad. I love these drips and these kind of shapes that are coming off here now. But we do need to add some lights into here because the the subsurface scattering works with lighting. So let's just add a couple of um, like area lights with some area shading. Let's just move this out here. You can see how that's just nicely glinting onto there. Um, let's just try that. Okay, let's just add, let's add another one on the other side. Let's just check as well that the, that the, um, the subsurface scattering is looking at these lights. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you can do, you can drop them in there um, and then say include or you can just leave it and I think it'll include them. So you can decide which lights you want to include and what you don't. So let's just do that and have a look, another little render of that. Okay, so I think that's got a nice sheen. That's starting to look really nice. Um, what we could do, we could add just a little bit more reflectance. If we put a Beckman in and just add a little bit of about 2% there. Let's give that a go. It might be a little bit too much now. No, it's not too bad effect. A little bit of shine. I'm not sure which one I prefer though. Um, let's just take some of this down. Oh no, sorry, the specular was too high. Let's put that specular in at two. Roughness about 20. Let's give that a go. That's probably quite nice. Yeah, that looks a bit slime, doesn't it? With a nice little bit of shine on there and just catching on these. So I hope you enjoyed that effect. Really nice effects you can do with this, with the, with, with the paint dripping and, and, or wax or whatever you want to call that. Have a go. Have a go with your own text. Have a go with objects, um, colours, lighting, subsurface scattering, all of those effects. Have a look at what you can achieve with this. It's a great effect. Post any comments below if you're having problems with it. Post any videos that you create. I'll be, I'll be, I'd love to see them. Um, anything that you make it's it's all it's all good it's all sharing isn't it so I might get some ideas from what you create and vice versa if you like this video please give Mike a like <laughs> it will catch on hopefully this Mike a like thing um, yeah give me a like below and I'll carry on making these okay my name is Mike German from visual animations take care bye for now